This is from section 7.5, page 211. So we're working with um, division or quotients here. So I have 5 to the 6th divided by 5 squared. So we're just going to follow the basic rule that says take the exponents and subtract, right? So 5 to the 6th minus 2 or 5 to the 4th, which would then be 5 to the 4th should then be evaluated, right? 5 to the 4th is 625. If you wrote this, okay, you're mostly done, but you're not really done. The book is focusing on the exponents, but anytime you have a number that could be um, evaluated and written out like 5 to the 4th, then that should be done. There would be exceptions to that if it was an extremely large number or something like that. Maybe you would leave it, but as a general rule, you're going to want to uh, simplify 5 to the 4th to 625. Number 3, x to the 7th divided by x to the 4th, so that's going to equal x to the 7 minus 4, which is going to equal x to the third power, or x cubed. As a general rule, if it's the third power, we'll say x cubed. If it's the second power, we'll say x squared. Beyond that, then we'll just say the number, like the 7th or 8th or whatever. So anyway, x to the third power for number 3. Number 5, a little more complicated, as we should expect. They get a little more complicated as we go. Different ways to do this. Um, but I've got to take my x's together, and I've got to take my y's together. And so that's going to be taking my x's. I've got x to the 6th, and I've got the 2 down in the bottom, and so I'm going to subtract 2, and that's going to be multiplied by my y, which is to the ninth power, and it's got the 5 down at the bottom, and so I'm going to subtract 5 from 9, and so down below here, I'm going to have x to the 6 minus 2 is 4, and y to the 9 minus 5, that is also 4. Okay? That's number five. Number seven, three-fifths to the fourth. Okay, so you're not always going to see an example of every single type of problem you're going to face. And so we didn't see an example like this in class. But it's if you think of it this way, maybe that's a little simpler. Three to the first, five to the first. So I've got three to the first power raised to the fourth or 1 times 4, or just 3 to the 4th, divided by 5 to the 1st power. So it's a power to a power. So that's 5 to the 4th. Okay? And then simplifying further, 3 to the 4th. 3 squared is 9. 27 is cubed. 81 is the 4th power of 3 and 5 to the 4th, we just did a minute ago, and that was 625, right? You really need to make sure that you're not simplifying this into, like, 3 over 5, because <laughs> the 4s cancel. They don't cancel, right? Those are numbers of a different base, and so you can't combine them, right? Now, I could use a calculator now and divide 81 by 625, but this is fine. I know that fraction doesn't simplify because I know in the numerator I have all threes and in the denominator I have all fives. So none of those would cancel out to simplify to one. So you're done with that one. So that's number seven. And finally, number nine. So that number nine becomes four to the negative two over seven to the negative two. And if I use my rules for exponents, a negative exponent, Right, the 7 is going to go up to the top, the 4 is going to go down to the bottom because they have negative exponents. So that's going to equal, in the denominator now, I have the 4 squared, and in the numerator, I have the 7 squared. And so that's going to equal 49 
over 16. Okay, and again, you know, you could divide that on a calculator. I wouldn't want you or expect you to do that in an exercise like this. And I know it doesn't simplify because, again, I have two sevens in the numerator and two fours in the denominator. And so nothing's going to cancel out there. So that's it. Hopefully that was helpful.